Hi, it's Tara Green talking about the Aquarius full moon of July 23rd, 2021 at 10.36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This chart is set for New York, New York. Now, besides it being an Aquarius full moon at one degree of Aquarius, which takes us back to the December 21st, 2020, amazing Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which was heralding the age of Aquarius. You remember that? And it was big news. Everybody was told to go outside and look at the beautiful planets in conjunction. And it was very rare because it heralds these two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, which come together every 20 years like clockwork, only meeting in air signs for the next about 200 years. Okay, so that was a big deal. Now, so this full moon with the moon at one degree Aquarius takes us back to that same degree and time. So that was seven months ago. Uh, you know, where did you think you would be? What did you think the Aquarius revolution would be all about? So it's kind of a reset, a reboot kind of really starting the revolution now in a way. Okay, now, so you can see I've drawn on the major aspects here. What I thought really stood out was that a number of points, the moon and a number of different planets in this chart are aligned with the four royal stars of, that represent the four archangels. So you can see here, I've put them on here. Uh, the moon, sorry, the north node at Nine degrees of Gemini is conjunct the Archangel Michael in the east. That is the fixed star Aldebaran. Now this is tropical astrology uh, and Lilith as well at zero degrees of Gemini is also widely conjuncted as well. Um, and you can see Lilith, the moon, and Vesta are making a grand air trine okay, as well. So the Archangels are here to help us out, to work with them. Uh, Venus is at two degrees of Virgo conjunct to the Archangel Raphael, which is the the star Regulus, which is traditionally called the heart of the lion. Now, that star has precessed into Virgo a number of years ago, around 2009, I believe, uh, where it's going to be for the next, you know, 2,160 years, something like that. Uh, a star moves, 70, moves one degree every 72 years, and there's 30 degrees in a sign, of course. So, this is where royalty has come down to, you know, marrying commoners and indicating that the royalty has to serve the people. So Venus conjunct Regulus. Regulus rules the heart, very beautiful energy, works with the emerald green ray. So if your heart needs healing, you would call on the Archangel Regulus. And there's Venus in Virgo, which is very earthy and practical and nitpicky and a little obsessive OCD, you know, wants to be of service, very humble, uh, worrying a lot, watching about your health. Um, hygiene uh, and being on budget. Okay, so Mars is also very close to that at 26 degrees of Leo. You know, Venus and Mars are still quite close together in the skies like they were at their meeting on uh, uh, July the 13th. And they're going to play tag with each other, following each other around for a little while now. So again, Archangel Raphael there. And then the south node of the moon, which represents what we're leaving in the past, is of course at nine degrees of Sagittarius. It's conjunct the big red star Antares, the rival of Mars, which is also in Archangel Oriel or Uriel. There's different ways of pronouncing it. Now, Vesta, sorry, Juno, one of my favorite stars uh, we have. Juno Awards in Canada for musicians, which is nice. Juno is was J Jupiter's wife in the Roman mythology. Um, she would be Hera to Zeus in Greek mythology, and she is traditionally the patriarch in nature into the goddess of marriage. But she was originally the feminine form of genius, which is multitasking. So Archangel a uh, Ariel here, Uriel here, connected the path, past and the feminine genius, of course, Connecting to Lilith there, you can see that as well. So very powerful. And then Jupiter at zero degrees of Pisces. Jupiter, the largest planet, the most bene benefic planet. Uh, Jupiter rules Pisces and Sagittarius traditionally. So Jupiter is in its strength right now. Connected to the Archangel Gabriel, the trumpet blower, you know, on Judgment Day. To a star called Fomal Holt, which is in one of the fishes of the mouth in the constellation of um, Pisces. So this is very auspicious to have Jupiter literally like having an angel, a guardian with us, opposite Regulus. Again, you can see those are the four major, they're called the royal Persian stars, okay, in the sky. So very auspicious to have planets and the nodes aligning to these stars, okay? So you want to call on the archangels. Now their job is always to help us. All you have to do is call. 
um, the moon itself is connected to a very powerful star called Altair, which is a flying eagle. And of course, this also gives us the sense of flying higher and seeing the big picture, which is what Aquarius energy is all about anyway. So again, grand air trine, you know, Aquarius is an air sign, not a water sign. The, it is pouring consciousness, which was uh, considered air. Now, so the moon trines uh, Lilith there at zero degrees of Gemini. Uh, you could include Ceres in that as well. Ceres is at 27 degrees of Taurus nearby, conjunct the fixed star Algol, which is Medusa's head, which is one of the heaviest stars in the sky. But Medusa was actually an Amazon warrioress. And then trining, these are all good aspects. Uh, air trine, any kind of trine is good positive. To Vesta, the goddess of investments, at two degrees of Libra, which is also conjunct something called the super galactic center, which is a big cosmic, the scientists don't even know what it is. The astrophysicists don't even know what this is. It is so big in the Lanakia cluster, it's driving all of the galaxies to it. And in fact, it's so big, it bends light. Uh, Philip Sedgwick, who's the expert on these deep space astrology, would be the astrologer to um, look for for that. But I have been sort of using these uh, degrees for a while as well. So again, very, very powerful, very cosmic, you know, Aquarius in the tarot is the sign called the star. So again, we're dealing with the stars and the modern ruler of Aquarius is Uranus and Saturn. Traditionally, I use both. And Saturn and Uranus are in a hard uh, square to each other right now. This is the major astrological aspect of 2021, of course, Saturn square Uranus. So it's the fight between the old order, Saturn, the old traditions, the history, you know, the big boys, the patriarchy, uh, who want to hold on to doing things the same old way, you know who those guys are. Uh, and then here's Uranus, the innovator, the re rebellion, the uh, inventor uh, connected to high tech. Um, Uranus is radical, revolutionary. Okay, so Uranus was invented in the late 1700s by Herschel through a telescope. So it was the first planet to be seen beyond the bounds of Saturn. And because it was invented with a telescope, it's considered to rule technology. So Uranus and Taurus since 2018 is a radical change in money. Taurus is money, finance is real estate, so it rules cryptocurrency. Uranus rules the internet. Aquarius is the sign of the internet as well. So all of these marvelous tools, and you know, we hate them when they don't work tools, um, are really here to be of service to us. Okay, so Aquarius is about, because it's opposite Leo, and the sun has just entered Leo um, the day before. Leo was ruled by the sun, so the sun is really strong in its power. You wear gold, you want to party. Um, you know, again, it's royalty, but the moon in Aquarius, the moon is always the feminine, it's receptive, it's what we nurture, it's our intuition, we want to focus on the balance so that we're not in this top-down 1% hierarchy. Uh, the moon in Aquarius is about the people, the people's needs, everybody's needs are the same in Aquarius. Okay, now, uh, Neptune is in Pisces, Neptune is, what's Neptune doing there? Uh, trining, no in conjunct to Mars in Leo. Now, Mars is also connected to that fixed star, Regulus. And Neptune and Pluto are in a sextile to each other, creating, you can see that green line there, that's called a finger of God or a yod to Mars there. Uh, it's gotta be a pretty tight. So this is Mars is actually the focus point, Mars and Leo. Uh, egos are too big, too proud, too much pressure. Uh, overdoing things, you know, uh, too much vanity, okay? Um, again, remember the moon in a crisis is all about all the people have the same amount of power, okay? Chiron in Aries at 12 degrees there is mm -hmm, kind of in a wide, hard square to Mercury at 21 degrees of Cancer. Now, Mercury is opposite Pluto, so again, there's that power balance between speaking from our hearts, um, thinking about what nurtures us, our family. It's the split between the needs to be with our family um, and our homes and work. So a lot of people are kind of being split about that. Some people are really enjoying, uh, because of COVID, working from home and being freer. Some people want to go back and, you know, be back at the office. So again, a lot of people are juggling that one. But overall, I would say this is a very auspicious full moon. And actually, um, there is going to be another Aquarius full moon on August 22nd, right at the last degree of Aquarius. Um, so to have two full moons follow each other in the same sign, that will be a blue moon next month. 
but I've put out uh, a meditation. I've got a PDF for you to do a meditation, some information about this full moon. So if you want to get that, you would have to email me at terragreen at terratero.com. Um, I have a little bit about this, and this chart is also at my website, sorry, at my blog at infinitynow.wordpress.com. Uh, this also, this lunation also features a strong need with Venus opposite Jupiter to do dream work. Um, and especially while Jupiter continues to be in Pisces until July 28th, I would really strongly pay attention to your dreams, intend that you will be awake in your dreams, you will remember your dreams, and to write them down, and to keep working with your own personal dream symbols, which are often very, very literal. So I don't recommend that people go to those dream dictionaries online. Uh, yeah, there are universal symbols, but you have personal archetypal symbols. Uh, but you want to begin to pay attention between... You know, you know what you're bringing in from daily stuff and then the deeper what they call lucid dreams or um, archetypal dreams. You, know, you want to pay attention to nightmares and shadows. This is a good time to do this. Jupiter will re-enter Aquarius July 28th and then won't re-enter Pisces again until December 29th. And then it's mainly in Pisces again, dipping into Aries in 2022. So to get ready to really pay attention to your dreams and listen to your intuition, that would give you a big advantage. So really, I think Ceres... Uh, Vesta and the moon, uh, we need to think for ourselves. We need to have balance in relationships. We have to refuse to compromise, okay? And remember that the moon is also conjunct Pluto, so it's a very intense um, energy here, okay? Aquarius' downside is getting too detached, you know, a little bit too robotic, a little too much AI, a little too much off-planet. So again, we want to make sure we stay balanced in our hearts, and I think that having all those four archangels really grounding us in that fixed uh, cross energy there is really, really important. So wishing you all the best for this full moon. Um, I did do a workshop on this. I don't know what's happened in the video. It kind of disappeared. There's some kind of tech difficulties uh, that I was having. But anyway, wishing you all the best blessings. If you like this uh, little video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to tip me, uh, you can tip me through my... Uh, PayPal account and I want to send you many blessings and please sign up. I will be doing that blue full moon in Aquarius uh, full moon workshop uh, the day before the full moon like I usually do them on August the 21st which is a Saturday at 7 30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Zoom. Um, I was trying out something new by going uh, live on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so sending you many blessings. Speak to you soon. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm all over the place. Okay, enjoy this full moon. Now pay attention to where the full moon follows or falls in your chart, okay? For each sign, of course, and for each person, it would have different meaning, okay? Think about the personal revolution that you want to bring to yourself. Uh, it usually means total transformation, you know, get a remodel, get a makeover, uh, and how you want to make over everything in the world. You know, we're all in this together. Okay, sending you many blessings.